morning. Welcome to our online worship service. I am Reverend Avni Christian, and I welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you will enjoy today's uh, uh, sermon at the same time, today's gathering, today's in uh, online uh, binding together. I hope that uh, you will join us. Remember, next week uh, is our new sermon series called Mountain Weavers, Places That You Have Gone. So I invite you to send your uh, vacation uh, pictures, pictures which you, uh, the vacations that you have uh, seen, maybe a mountain or a river or a lake or a road trip, or maybe a simple uh, uh, oceans that you have went in. And uh, if you want to take those pictures, and if you have those pictures, please send it uh, to us at uh, wegoumcucc at gmail.com. I hope that we will enjoy your stories, uh, your pictures also during this time as we share and learn about the biblical mountains and the meanings of those mountain and river, lake, ocean, and road trip. Also remember, we will be having um, our in-person picnic at Reed Clip Kipler Park in West Chicago to the North, uh, North Pavilion just by the uh, Cemetery Road. Please do come on uh, August 20th is our picnic. So please do come at 10 a.m. and join us outdoor service. Also, we are going to have a grand opening, which is going to be coming up on September 30th. Please uh, save your date on September 30th. We will be having our grand opening as, as a new Hope United Methodist Church as we move forward where God is leading us into. Now, let us begin our service as we prepare our hearts and minds. Amen.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We are at the last week of our sermon series called Ties That Binds. Today we are looking at the anointing spirit, at the anointing of each other as together, as we bound together. We are anointed uh, together uh, from all directions of our lives and also uh, and the unity with each other that matters. In our scripture, we says we learn that how good and pleasant it is when kindred, which is brotherly, well together in unity. It is a beautiful thought. We could feel how that the energy carried us through the song into this amazing place called sanctuary. How good and pleasant it is when the kindred dwells together in unity. Well, let me tell you something of the background of this song, the Psalm 133. It is said to be the Psalm of David. You know, the stories of King David, which we find in First and Second Samuel. And in that story, there is a more bloodshed and division and the brother against sister assault and brother against brother violence and nation against stranger war there is enough of that to either make you stay away from the part of that bible story this psalm of david how good and pleasant it is when kindred well to well together in unity is actually a psalm of a broken hearted uh, heartedness because in David's family there was no much uh, strife that by the end of two generations the man who was the great unifier had sworn the seeds for a country to be divided in a way it would never unite again. David wanted things to look unified and that was perhaps his downfall. How good and how pleasant it is for a kindred to dwell together in this unity. And yet in today's world, don't we know what it is like to be divided? We live in a time when you cannot read a paper or read your social media feed without recognizing how divided we are. It's a time when we wonder when we encounter friends or maybe when we encounter family, if we, if, we, if we can have any kind of conversation that reflects a connectedness instead of this division. We live in a broken time. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just dwell together in unity? You know, we long for it so much that at one point, uh, eight denominational leaders got together and wrote a letter that they called a call for unity. The, they published it in April 1964 in the Birmingham newspaper. And they published it when men and women of the civil rights movement sat in a Birmingham jail. Four days later, four days later, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote a letter from the jail. And it was a letter that explained why that call for unity for all religious leaders was called that could not stand. If you have never read or haven't read in a while, Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from the Birmingham jail. Today is the day to read it. It's a fine read and it's fast read. In that letter, brilliant things he said, but, but probably most relevant to today's task. He calls out his disappointment in the white moderate who in the name of unity 
ignored the injustice he was working to do. Who, he said, prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice. How good and how pleasant it is for a kindred to dwell together in justice, to dwell together in that place of justice. And so we sit here this morning, hearing the longing of David's heart, hearing that the longing of our own hearts. How do we find this place of unity? How do we find that good and pleasant place where oil is poured on our heads in such an abundance that it runs down into our beards and down the collar? Don't you just want that? All, 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 all over your collar, all over your beard. Oh my goodness. Well, what that text is referring to actually might say something about that path to unity. Oil on our heads, anointing us, running down in abundance, drew falling from the mountain down into the valleys in a dry land, falling in abundance. Because that little psalm of David became a psalm of ascent. It was the song that the people sang as they walked um, up to the mountain to worship God. This is the song that it was the song of longing that they sang on their pilgrimages. It was a song they sang together that hoped that they would meet indeed a kindred spirit and walk together that path of peace. So let's talk about this anointing oil that connects with this unity this togetherness, that's this flowing of togetherness. The oil used in the consecration of the priests would be poured over the head of the priest and it would then flow down over the head, down his beard and even onto the priestly gar garments themselves. But the directions of this oil is what fascinates us to see the unity that this psalm is proposing. Oil on Aaron's beard is compared to the dew of the Hermon. The figures are representative of the geographical Israel. The oil is poured upon the head, which is the north, and flows down the beard, which is the south. Likewise, with Aaron's beard, which is the north, which flows down the collar of his robe, which is the south. Likewise, the dew of the Hermon, which is the north, which flows down the mountain of the Zion, which is the south. This is the crawl, the fight between the northern and the southern kingdoms, a plea for their reunification. Only then will the Lord ordain his blessing forever. In verse three, we find. Just as oil is poured on the head, but doesn't stay there and flows down upon the head, so should Israel's head, which is north, be you united with the Israelites' heart with the south, just as the beard of the uh, Aaron flows from head to the body, so should Israel live in unity from north to south, just as the dew of the Hermon in the north waters the hills of the Zion that is south, so should the northern and the southern brothers live together in unity. Isn't that beautiful? The 
entire impact of the psalm is designed to show how the body of Israel is or should be whole and consecrated in all its parts. Exactly the body of Christ that we call the church. The image then is one of the flowing together. The psalm stressed the beauty and the richness of the continuous flow, whether oil, a figure rich with its association to priestly cons uh, consecration, the beard of Aaron, another reminder uh, of uh, Israel's priestly tradition, or the dew of Hermon, a figure which evokes the ge geographical and uh, topographical flow of Israel's heritage. The entire land is seen as a body of head and heart or of the complete priestly figure, such as Israel as an Aaron from head, beard, collar and robes. How pleasant it is it would be if these brothers could live again in harmony with some meaningful and pleasant small talk. In such a place the psalmist sings the blessing of the Lord would endure forever when this happens. When the body of Christ from north and south comes together and united, so does for us too. How good and how pleasant it is when the kingdom dwells together in courage. How good and how pleasant it is when kingdom dwells together in justice. How good and how pleasant it is when kindle dwell together in compassion. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred dwells together in truth. How good and how pleasant it is that when kindred dwell together in unity. We are called to be in unity with Christ and with each other. We are bound to tie together. Even though we may have different ways of things, but we are flowing like an oil consecrated through the Spirit through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are bound together. And then in that blood of Jesus Christ, we are made one as brothers and Christ in ministry to each other. Let us live out our new mission. One in Christ. One with each other and one in ministry to all. Amen. Our church is sustained through this wilderness time by your faithful generosity. You can continue to send your offerings by mail, or for more information about setting up an electronic funds transfer, contact Roberta Kent or Pastor Odney.
For joining us today. I hope that you will join us again next week as we continue a new series in August series called Summer Places That You Go. Uh, I hope that you will join us. I hope that you will continue to support us. I hope that you have found God's unified spirit today and I hope that to see you again and again every single time. Let us now end uh, with the benediction that comes uh, from Paul who always says the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the amazing presence of Holy Spirit reside in you now forevermore. Amen.